All right, what's up, guys? It's Kostaf here. Now, today I'm going to tell you guys about my first time going out and tagging up and doing like graffiti with spray paint, and, like not on like community walls and not on desks and not in like books, because that's basically all I had done up until this point. Now, this takes place in Australia, right around 11th grade. And I had learned how to do graffiti over like the past few years because it was really popular in my school. And we actually had a few decent writers there, and they used to tag like all over the school, and we used to share pieces and stuff like that. Basically, graffiti had become this like massive thing where you would bring a black book to school and kind of show off what you could do and during the weekends everyone would go out and spray paint most of the time it was on community walls because this was kind of like a prissy white rich kid school but people would bring in pictures of like the stuff they do over the weekend and kind of share it and things like that graffiti was just a massive culture but it finally come time for me and my little group of rank amateurs at doing this to finally go out and actually tag something illegally like at night and like not done on some community wall and if you guys don't know what that is it's like all the YMCA's and just kind of like community centers or just like group places would make basically their whole entire buildings open for graffiti artists so like once a week all the graffiti artists would come to these buildings and kind of do their tags take pictures and whatever and then someone else would come along and paint over it it was basically the city's way of deterring graffiti by allowing like these kids to go to a place and do it legally but everyone knows the cool people go do it illegally can do it fast and under pressure and all that stuff and that's half the reason why the art's so cool because not only is it beautiful it's usually in some like really hard to get to place or it's just some weird place you wouldn't have any idea how they got there to be able to do that piece or how they got away with it it's kind of like the rush of the art. So me and my little group of amateur art criminals had set out to form some little tag group. So this is very similar to like Call of Duty clans and I guess other kind of groups that kind of all come together and like make a name and then we all tag it up so that it becomes more known because then instead of having just one person tagging, you've got a whole group. And we formed a group called AKA or also known as. And this was going to be AKA's first adventure into the unknown to go spray paint. Now the other people in my group had all said that they had done it before. And for the most part, I believed about half of them. The other guys were just front and saying they'd gone out and tagged and stuff like that, but could never ever show us like where it was and we went around all the city all the time and most of the times you tag places you go so you get to walk by it every day and kind of see it or at least are familiar with the area and the fact that we hadn't seen most of these guys tags before kind of gave them away but we had formed into this little group of four that included my friend John from Sky Greglins and his friend Baden John, if you remember, was that Canadian guy, and Baden was this kind of like short, blonde-haired, crazy Australian dude that used to go by Master Baden because he thought it was funny. And he was the most experienced of this. Apparently, he had gone out and like tagged up a whole bunch of stuff. Now, he wasn't like super into graffiti, but he was like a super skater. He was into that whole skating community. You know, all the kids that would go hang out at the skate parks and tag everything up. So he was used to going out and tagging on stuff and would use the skateboard to kind of like get away or move quickly in between spots. So this guy was going to be our like guide to tonight. He was going to show us the spots to tag. He was going to be kind of like the guy who told us what to do and assigned a lookout and things like that. Because we weren't just going to go do some tags. At the end of the night, we were going to go try and do a piece. Which in the future, this is usually how those nights ended up. We would go around tagging all night and then try to end up at a place where we could all do a piece. Now, most of the time, we'd all work on the same one just to make it go by quickly. But sometimes we did our own little individual ones, and I don't think we ever finished them, like, ever. I will eventually tell you all about a lot of these stories and kind of pro I'll probably actually combine them all into one because almost every single time, we almost got caught. But it wasn't like here in America where they chased you in police cars and all this other random stuff. We just had to run from security, and because it was a city, you know, you'd be able to get away, like, pretty damn easily. You'd almost expect to get caught doing it in some places, so you knew you had to do it, like, really quick and get the fuck out of there. And that was the, kind of the rush, to be honest. But now tonight, we were going to go to like some familiar spots that were like on our way to school, around the different bus routes, and then eventually try to end up at a train spot. Now, this is where most of us rank amateurs go, is because, you know, obviously we hear about train yards and everyone paints on trains. And there are these huge yards that, like, unless you have a crew of like 50 security guards to monitor or a whole bunch of cameras, you really can't watch all the trains because there's usually like hundreds of them stored out in these fields. Now, we were stupid and had high hopes, so we had actually set out to go do it at the wharf at the end of the night, but we ended up never making it there for reasons you're about to hear about. So we all met up at Chatswood, because that's kind of the spot that we always met up at, and Baden was bringing all the spray paint, because neither me or John, one, had money to go buy a bunch of spray paint, because spray paint's expensive, and two, they usually don't sell that shit to kids, because they know exactly what you're going to use it for. So Baden was that crazy little fucker that would go into these stores and steal a shit ton of paint cans, and then, like, that's how we got our paint. Now, of course, we all had markers, and not, like, normal markers. Markers, like big ass paint markers because we would go to all these graffiti shops on the weekends and stuff like that And of course I had a whole bunch of those because all I had done is drawn on paper and kind of like on my desk and around the school This story does take place like six months before the other story I told you when I like got caught graffiti and had to go clean up the school But just used the graffiti cleaning up stuff to do more tags by then I'd grown pretty bold This is like young amateur wannabe cost. It was like totally fucking scared to go out and do this This is like the first illegal thing I think I've ever done if I really think about it unless I like accidentally did something illegal 
illegal before that. But no, nah, this was like the first time where we had set out to do like 100% illegal shit. We were going out to spray paint the city. Now, of course, like any group of wannabes, we all met up and no one had any idea where to go. Baden was to be our guide, but had no idea where to take us because he had just no idea about the area. He was actually from like 40 or 50 minutes away. He didn't really live near us. And so was John. I think John took like two cabs and a train to get there. He lived really far as well. I had lived kind of like right down the street. So when it came to picking a spot, I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go take the train. We'll go down like two spots and we'll go tag up the place I used to live, Greenwich. Because I remember Andy, the kid that used to live across the street from me from that story that I told about that huge lag I caught in about skateboarding. He had these massive white walls that kind of like bordered his property. And they had kind of like a regular problem graffiti artist, so they, they were always painting over that shit. And it was just figured, I was like, well, there's the one spot I can really think of that's like really easy and really accessible. And it's kind of dark there. There's no like lights there. So that's the first place we headed out to. So we got on the train, we got off, we did the short walk. I got to go see my old house because at this point I'd actually moved. This was the house I lived in that where we kind of went to that little tiny neighborhood school that was like, the, I guess the middle school. But I was at Skex yeah, Raglan's at this point was another school and we'd already moved. So it was kind of cool to see my old house. And then I also got to see Andy's house. Now I had kind of fallen out of touch with Andy. He actually ended up going to, I think, the Chatswood High School, so I didn't actually see him very much. Or I actually hadn't even seen him since. So we got to this guy's wall, and before I know it, fucking Baden just jumps out and does this, like, ninja kind of crab walk sideways. He, he just tags the absolute shit out of the entire wall. I remember sitting there going, wow, this dude's got fucking balls. He came here to do fucking work. Like, we're actually tagging shit out. There's no stand around and talk about it for a while. We gotta go do this shit and get the fuck out of there. And I was actually kind of proud that we had a friend that was just, like, down to do this stuff, and we ended up running right behind him as he finished but the only thing I really remember being kind of funny is I looked over to my left right as we were running by it and I noticed he had done like all these tags including aka all in this like really light yellow paint and you could fucking hardly see that shit you definitely couldn't read it there was runs all over the place he fucked it up like terribly he even hit the sidewalk a little bit so although my homie had balls of steel my, he was just a fucking terrible graffiti artist this guy had no style his shit was fucking whack now, I've always considered myself pretty good at it. Like, I'm not, like, on optic hex level. His shit is absolutely fucking insane. If you guys want to go see someone do some, like, time lapses of them doing some actual pieces on, like, a black book, he has some amazing videos. And there's even more if you go search, like, art crimes on YouTube and things like that. But I was, like, pretty damn decent. My style hasn't actually changed much from then until now. So the stuff that you guys see me do now is kind of the same stuff I was doing back then because it's literally been since then that I've done it. So when we came to the next spot, was was like right next to the train station. There was this long like wooden fence behind like the row of shops where all the dumpsters and stuff were. But there was always this one really long spot that we'd all kind of like go congregate before we could catch our train. Because in this big of a city, there's no yellow school buses or anything like that. We all took public transportation. The schools would give us these little passes that could get us on the trains and the buses as many times as we wanted. And pretty much any time we had to get on one of these trains, we'd all kind of like meet up in these spots around the train area. Now we couldn't hang out in like public areas because we were wearing school uniforms. And this school was so well known that if like you got caught doing something stupid even outside of school wearing your school uniform these fuckers would snitch on you they would literally call your school and tell you there's these kids on the bus or these kids at the train station doing this and because they have records of what trains you take because of your passes they instantly knew who you were so we'd always meet up in these like back alleys and kind of like off the wall spots and i kind of knew about that spot so i told Baden. and john went there with me all the time so he was like yeah let's go do that let's go do that so when we got there Baden, of course went to go run up but i ran right in front of that motherfucker i was like hell fucking no you are not gonna dirty up this wall with your shitty fucking tags. And I did the most ridiculous fucking long ass tag of tricks. That was my tag right then. I wasn't Costa. I made it like obnoxiously large. Not like the whole tag, but the S was just the most retarded fucking thing you've ever seen in the world. And it was so big because I didn't want him to tag like anywhere near my shit. Of course he did. As soon as I was done, he was like, yeah, props. And then like went over and tagged like not on top of it, but like all around it. And then, of course, we just ran the fuck out of there, like, giggling and laughing and thinking we were super badass and so fucking cool. That we decided to kind of, like, up the ante. Because although it was fun tagging these spots that was dark and there was no people around because we knew we could kind of get away with it, it was no big deal. We kind of wanted to, like, up the ante a little bit. We wanted to go do some, like, train stations so that we could actually see it as we were, like, going to school. And we could show our friends when we were, like, around them going out on the weekends. So we started hitting train stations. And basically, we would take a train to a train station and then just go run completely off of it and just keep going down the tracks a little bit to like the power box now most of these train stations have these like little sheds that are like apart from the whole building because i guess they have materials and stuff like that they got to keep away from the public these things are prime targets for graffiti and so we did a whole bunch of tags all over one and then we went to the next one and we did it like three or four more times now this is right about the time we were supposed to go to the wharf which is kind of like this train station slash boat place where you can get a ferry my hope was to get on one of the old ferries and tag up one of those bastards because like trains they always had them like lined up in a row really late at night and there was never anything on them the only thing in between them was 
was like this tiny little fence so you could easily get into them. But my friends, well, they all grew vaginas and said that they had enough that night. And it was only like 11 o'clock. A lot of them had to get home because this was a school night. So they all pussied out and went and got trains home. So the story of us getting away with tagging up all over these places and being super crazy is about to come to a grinding halt. Because although this is a story the first time I went tagging, it's also the story the first time I actually ran into cops, like a real run in with the fucking police. Now these were Australian cops, so they were fucking cooler. So this story is going to sound like a little bit more relaxed than the other like cops who instantly put us in handcuffs, instantly put us in cars and brought us down to jail and questioned us and tried to trick us and all this shit. These were Australian cops and we were dumbass kids. But we'll eventually get to that. Now, a lot of the trouble I got into Australia really centered around one decision. And that decision was that I was a kid that would just go to Chatswood and just meet up with people. I wouldn't call people and like tell them I was coming. I would never make plans with people to show up. I would just go there and hang out with whoever I ran into because I had kind of like jumped around a whole bunch of different groups and just known a whole bunch of people there and there was always someone there so I wouldn't just like call around and kind of do the seeky thing of trying to find a buddy to go hang out with that weekend we would just all kind of congregate there now when you have an arrangement like that in a big ass place like Chatswood in a big ass city like Sydney well there's bound to be a few losers that kind of hang around that group too and well when everyone else is busy doing like real kid stuff like schoolwork and like sports and being good kids at home there's always one or two losers that hang around the mall and these are the people that are there all the time so I ended up kind of hanging out with them now these people had no parental supervision like I said there was a lot of Asian kids that came over from like all the different Asian countries totally unsupervised because their parents had sent them over here for education under like the guise of like a boarding school or a chaperone a lot of times it'd be like an older brother or a housekeeper someone that had like no authority over them whatsoever so they would just run amok across the city and a lot of times they would run away and just like not talk to their parents anymore and just kind of live on the street it's a crazy situation now that's how me and Wusung eventually ran into those kinds of people and this was one of the first nights that it happened. Now Wusung wasn't with me so I was all by myself but after all my friends kind of like ditched me and went on trains homes I decided to go to the arcade and just kind of go hang out with whoever was there. Now I don't even remember the names of these people. I don't even remember their faces because I only spent like this one time with them. Now I ended up running into this one guy that I didn't really even know. The only reason why I knew him is I had seen him at the YMCA one time doing pieces and we kind of talked for like a brief second while we were resting from doing our artwork but he had a whole bunch of people with him and some chicks so this was obviously the group I wanted to hang out with because I'm 15 years old and like you know obviously thirsty as fuck and they were sitting in the arcade waiting for their friend to come back with a whole bunch of beer and the plan was they were going to break into this little kind of like rugby arena across the street from the arcade and kind of go in the stands and drink so I was like, oh, hell yeah, the saviors of the night. I'm not going to have to go home at 11 o'clock. I'm going to go have a whole lot of fun. Now, my parents were like really strict with me. But for some reason in Australia, they really just kind of trusted me to do my own thing. They figured I would come home at a reasonable time. And sometimes I would like call them if it was like after 10. And this is one of those nights where I call and said, hey, it's going to be a little late. We're here at this internet cafe. We're still playing. And they're like, yeah, have fun, have fun. And they were at some party. And this is something that I had done like a whole lot before and never gotten in trouble. And until this point, I was kind of like a goody goody two shoes. So my parents parents like totally trusted me so I knew I had to about midnight one o'clock so I was actually really excited to go hang out with these people that I'd like never known and they were from a different high school and their girls were new and <laughs> and I had this badass story to tell them all about you know going graffiti and stuff like that and that's exactly what happened we broke into the little rugby hall we got up into the stands they all started drinking except for me I actually didn't like the taste of beer back then I was like 15 years old and only had one one other time the few times that I'd actually ever drunk before that were my friends who would like steal three or four like Smirnoff ices from their parents and we would drink them. Now obviously you know those things don't really get you drunk, it's like a girl beer. So while they were all kind of like cracking into beers, me and one other guy from the group decided to go around the rugby arena and start tagging shit up. Cause I had all my paint markers in this like secret pocket that I had in these Jinko jeans. If you guys don't know what those are, there's these really popular jean brand like 10 years ago and they're like really baggy and all the skaters and graffiti artists wore them especially because they had like hidden pockets a lot of the times in the jeans somewhere and I had one that had like this hidden pocket right next to my knee where I put like stickers and markers and stuff like that. So we went and tagged up the place as the guy started to drink. Now I say started to drink because they really probably only got like a sip or two before the fucking cops showed up. Broke into this like outdoor rugby arena. I can't believe no one thought that that might set off an alarm or there might be people watching on some kind of camera. But literally within 10 minutes of being there, these cops rushed in. It was like two cops and they ran right up the stands and right at my friends. Now me and this other dude are like 20 yards away from everybody and they fucking just scatter. My dudes like jump off of the pier. These dudes are doing all these fucking Spider-Man moves 
deserves to get away. One dude even punched the female cop like right in the fucking face and then ran the fuck off. And me and this other guy kind of looked at each other like fuck and we both started kind of like running down so we could get off this pew because I wasn't about to jump off this thing. It wasn't like super high up. It was like one story up but I still wasn't about to jump off it. So we all kind of like ran down these stairs and tried to get off of this thing. As soon as I got to the bottom I got stuck by that damn cop and she put me right into the wall. My friend bumped right into her knocked her off of me. But at this point I am literally so fucking scared. Yeah this story isn't about gangster cops. This isn't savage cops. This is young little 15 year old pussy cops who had never done anything illegal in his life and never done anything like this in his life. So at that point I was just fucking shook. I stayed still. This fucking cop just got shoulder fucked way off of me and she went fucking flying and her male partner started running after my friend and he eventually got away. Now this woman cop eventually got up. I even remember looking down and being like are you okay? And she's screaming don't move don't move and I'm like I'm not fucking going anywhere. Now these cops don't have their guns out. I don't think they even have guns. I think all they have is these little sticks and flashlights so this isn't like one of those American situations where some kid gets shot by now. She, But she grabbed me by the shoulder and put me back in the wall and was like who are your friends? What are you doing here? What's your name? And stuff like that. And I am so scared at this point. All functions in my brain have ceased. I'm giving fucking dumb Homer Simpson answers. I even lied about my name and gave her this like Jay Chandler alias and some shit like that and when she was asking me all these questions about where I was from and who I was I told her I was just this American exchange student and like I told her this massive lie like just a whole bunch of shit that wasn't true because I was just so scared about getting into trouble but they had me and they were fucking pissed especially her because she not only had gotten shoulder fucked she got decked right in the face by that guy that was the graffiti artist that I knew now I don't even remember his name I want to say it starts with an R I'm like racking my brain as I'm telling this story to try to remember this stuff about this guy the only thing I can really remember is he kind of looked like that tall like Arabian kid from like the second last season of skins that's really all I can remember how he looks like this really tall kid with like long black hair and I, he was either Indian or Pakistani or something like that but I guess this guy ran with a fucking crazy group because these guys had no problems like pushing cops off of them and like bumping them to get the fuck away. I had never seen any shit like that. So I'm like literally shaking, totally pissing my pants, just lying out of my ass. And they fucking drilled me too because they asked me questions that I even knew the answers to, but I didn't know the answer for the wrong answer. So they asked me like, what was my star sign? Now for the longest time, I had fucking no idea what they meant until I finally remember that my actual birthday star sign is Sagittarius. Because I had given them a different day, but it was still within the same month of December, December, I had no idea that that same like Sagittarius star sign applied to like the whole month So I was telling them I had no idea and then eventually said Sagittarius is like so you do know And they fucking questioned me for a hot minute before I gave up my phone number and, and told them who my parents were and stuff like that So they could call them now They had nothing really to charge me with besides trespassing because I had no alcohol on my breath I had no like pain on my hands and they didn't know that I were graffitiing or anything like that Or so I thought because literally five minutes after I thought I had gotten away with this And they were just gonna give me a ticket for trespassing or probably just let me go because I'm 15 and I know it. I'm getting a slap on the wrist and here it comes. But no, they actually called in and said, oh, they found all this graffiti that was fresh. Like they could touch it and it was still wet. So they thought it was me and they just started drilling me about this shit because they had taken my wallet and inside my wallet I had some stickers. But luckily the only stickers I had were my friend's stickers. So none of the tags that I had done in the arena matched the ones on those stickers. Now you would think I'd have learned something at this point and avoided the story that I already told you about that happened at Skeggs. But no, that little fact just never really sunk in. Believe it or not, that little pocket in the Jinko jeans worked. They never found that shit. And it was this big ass paint marker and a whole bunch of stickers that actually had my tag on them and it was the exact marker that I had used in the arena. Because I was 15, I guess because they're Australian cops, they never like fully searched me. They like made me empty out my pockets and things like that but they never actually patted me down because I guess I was a minor. But my parents eventually showed up and they told them the whole story about catching me in this arena and how much I lied because they eventually found out everything. And, you know, my parents told them everything and eventually they found my license that I had kind of like hidden in my back pocket and taken out of my wallet which is kind of a trick these inner city kids have kind of told me about which is you never keep your ID in your wallet because if you get caught they're gonna know everything about you or get beat up or you get robbed they're gonna know everything they don't want people to know where you live so you always kind of like hid your ID usually with your money like in your sock or in your hidden pocket my hidden pocket was actually being occupied at the moment so that's the reason why I didn't have it in there but thank god they never fucking found that shit and didn't even end up charging me with trespassing they just let me go my parents showed up my dad is this big old burly dude and he was fucking pissed moreover he had taken a cab there because he was at some party so my dude had had a couple so he was not a fucking happy camper he had to leave a party with his business friends to come pick up his kid from jail that was like 15 years old that he thought was somewhere playing fucking video games but yeah they never charged me with anything they never put me in handcuffs they never fingerprinted me they never took my picture they never did anything they knew I was some little shit kid and that whole thing was probably just to scare me because they didn't really have anything on me besides trespassing and well kids are gonna be kids and I wasn't exactly acting like a badass I was fucking shook I was 
so apologetic and I was like begging for mercy like hey don't arrest me please 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 you know I'm not even a citizen of Australia like please don't do this it could get my parents in trouble things like that because my parents had always kind of told us that we'd ever gotten in any trouble that could affect our visa status so, yep that's pretty much the story the first time we went tagging now this is the first of many this is something that we ended up doing for quite a long time it was probably like the thing that me and my group of friends did for like the next years we always went to either graffiti shops or went to go check out new graffiti spots or went to like public walls and did tags it's just what our group did and this continued on for quite a while until i really started to hang out with wusung now i'm not trying to give this like totally illegal activity like a positive light and not try to encourage people to go do it this is something i did as a very young dumb kid in a very big city in a time where graffiti was like really popular and although i'm going to tell you a whole lot of stories about doing it and believe it or not this is the only time i ever really got in trouble for it other than the school stuff so i never really got in, like caught like doing something really big and got in a whole bunch of trouble with the police i actually avoided that but that does actually happen nowadays especially in america is an extremely serious crime it is in australia too and it's not something that i would think is ever a good idea this was totally fucking stupid only fucking idiots go out and spray paint tags on buildings for no other reason but just to deface it so i fully support you guys going to like public walls and spaces or on canvases or things that you can do legally because graffiti is actually one of my favorite art forms and it's something that i fucking find is so fascinating but to go run around the city and do dumb shit like my 15 year old self is probably not the best idea i hope you guys enjoyed the story see you guys tomorrow